we may be bringing this up a little bit again uh, in the next month or so, so be prepared. Uh, I think it's a good song. A reading from the Gospel of John the Evangelist, chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews debated, excuse me, debated among themselves, asking, how can this man give us flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I assure you, unless you eat the flesh of the human one, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. My flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me lives because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It isn't like the bread your ancestors ate, and then they died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fire. 
Moses took off his sandals and he approached this burning bush, knowing that this must be hallowed ground, that this may be where the revelation of God would finally come in to set the people free. When he approached the bush, he talked to the bush, and guess what? The bush, it talked back. The bush said, go unto Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. When Moses asked, who should I say who has sent me? And the bush replied, I am. Saying it was I am that sent Moses unto the house of Pharaoh, that there would be ten plagues of death and disease. The river Nile would turn red like blood. Today modern scholars think it might have been a red algae bloom that killed the fish that had made the animals sick. We find that after the water had been turned to red, that gnats began to flock all over. The gnats began to eat fungus and mold and all of the destructive things that had happened that were growing on the dead fish as they floated alongside the Nile. Flies began to swarm as a natural response we find that boils began to set in, that locusts came in, and following the locust frogs came. Finally, the sun went dark for three days in the land. Three days of darkness. But Pharaoh would not change his mind. The Passover would happen. Moses called the people together and said, Take a lamb, hook it, do not break any of its bones. Take its blood and put it on the lintel and the doorpost, so that the angel of death will pass by. This is the story that is in the minds of those who are listening to Jesus in the sixth chapter of John. For the time was during the time of Passover. It was a time where they were looking for freedom. They were looking for solace. Jesus describes himself as the Lamb of God, the bread of heaven. Now, when I was in the seminary, I would use mixed metaphors. And you know what my seminary professors would say? Don't use mixed metaphors. They write really big on my paper in bright red. Don't use mixed metaphors. But the mixed metaphors that Jesus spoke today were ones that truly confused some, but enlivened others. It caused them to grow and rise and find the still speaking God and the voice of Jesus, the one who had come down from above so that the people might have eternal life. Many of us who are followers in the way today are a little confused when we hear of this eternal life. We think it's some place that we're trying to get to. Any of you try to get to eternal life? I know at points in my life I've tried, but the reality of it is, is that eternal life is something that begins here and now as we begin to follow in the ways of Christ. 
The writer of Ephesians tells us to act wisely and not foolish, but to take advantage of every opportunity. That, folks, we should be educated, not being ignorant, but we should seek to understand the Lord's will. That we should speak to each other with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing to the Lord with our hearts, and as we do so, we begin to rise with the bread of life. See, those songs, those spiritual hymns, those things that come from our voice, that come to us and out of us, deep within our heart, are transforming. See, they are the sugar and the lemon. They're the food that sustains us. They're the things that enable us to seek God with a passion. They allow us to rise and stretch out and be formed by the great maker of heaven and earth. As we begin to begin needed by God, we begin to be formed in Christ's image. As we are formed in Christ's image, things begin to happen. Things begin to change. We begin to be a people truly transformed. I'm going to mix my metaphors here. <laughs> so as we begin to become the raised bread of life, we too take in the body and the blood. Two things that come to us easily in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But in John's gospel, it's a little more difficult. In John's gospel, as we take in this body and this blood, we find it's the spiritual energy that keeps us going. You know for the Jewish people that blood was the energy of life. It was the very life force of what God has given us. That when you eat an animal, you did not eat or drink its blood. For you were taking in its life. But Jesus invites us into a new way of being. Jesus invites us into entering into the divine and being strengthened for our journey. Strengthened for the hope of the world that transforms and transcends all that God has given us. So no longer do we suffer when depravity and sin enter. No longer do we assume that it's okay for folks to go hungry or folks to not have clean water or a safe place to live. For when we are truly energized with the body of Christ, we too in turn become that body. We begin to heal and feed transcend the world around us. We become the living bread that comes down from heaven so that we can truly be agents of change and hope, harmony, and justice. This week I'd like you to think about how God is raising you up how the hymns and songs and spiritual music that you listen to your whole life is feeding you. Feeding you not to just sit back and relax. Not to just simply push back from the table and say, hmm, that was good. But to actually use it for energy, for work, for mission, for life. For eternal life has been.
be done for those of us who are in this room. For those of us who follow in the way of Jesus the Christ, eternal life has begun. So guess what? We need to live. Live abundant lives. Lives that show that we have risen in Christ.